Hey guys, Technomentary here with a video for you guys. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the iPhone 6S going into 2021. And we're going to talk about the hardware, the software, and the overall performance of the iPhone 6S. And if it's worth still buying the iPhone 6S or not. And who the phone might be good for and who it might not be good for. So stay tuned in this video. But before we go ahead and get started, if you guys are new to the channel, we do a lot of tech news reviews and giveaways. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. So let's go ahead and dive into today's video. As you can see here in my hand is the Space Gray edition of the iPhone 6S. So the iPhone 6S was released around September 2015. So it's been over five years, close to its five and a half to six year mark. And this phone, as you can see, has that old body where you have the aluminum body all around you have that single 12 megapixel camera with the apple logo and the iphone 6s a distinction between its other predecessor the iphone 6 is that s logo right there as you see here the body of course is an aluminum body it's a simple frame really light in your hand compared to some of the newer phones if you really compare the frames as you see a lot has changed such as glass are now being uh, back glass or just a full body glass it's a little bit heavier this is the iphone 12 pro if you guys haven't seen the unboxing of it make sure you guys check that out on our channel as well so you can see right off the bat a lot has changed in terms of the phone evolution over time and that might be you know a good thing or a bad thing depend on how you look at it and to really talk about the other big difference, you know, the iPhone 6S, of course, you have that whole touch ID in the top notch. Here, as you see here, the frame on this one, 6S, is a smaller version. It's not the 6S Plus, which is the larger version of it. The iPhone uh, 6S is the 4.7 inch retina display play one so it looks really tiny if you have used one of the newer phones as you can see if we compare side by side screen does not seem like it's a lot but when it first came out if you had compared it with the iphone 5 lineup the screen seems huge but with the all screen body now the 4.7 compared to the lineup of the uh, the iphone 12 and the 12 mini which has the 5.4 and the 6.1 inch display the iphone 6s doesn't seem like it is that big of course you can score this color um of course this phone comes in multiple colors you see here the space gray edition it also comes in your silver edition one and your gold and the special color apple introduced which is the rose gold one for it so four different colors and in terms of the storage uh back then in 2015 there was a storage was a big deal for iphone so you could get in couple configuration here as you can see we have the 32 gig one of course the base model comes at the 16 gig and 16 gig if you compare to phones nowadays in 2021 doesn't seem like it's anything at all it's about how much it takes to even have the basic app and the actual software running on a regular phone but this phone does have other configuration you have the 16 gig you have 32 gig you're able to go up to 64 gig and even at the higher end if you pay a little bit more you're going to be paying a little bit more for the 128 gig which is the base base storage nowadays for the iphone 12 lineup so as you can see the max on the iphone 6s compares to what's the base was back then on the iphone 6s so that's one thing to notice and of course the other thing we really want to talk about is the chip on this phone of course it's been almost six years since the phone was released this does have an a9 chip in it compared to the newer iphones which have the a14 bionic chip so almost five generation of chip that's because every time apple releases a new phone it also updates the chip so a lot has changed and that doesn't really make maybe much of a difference depending on how you look at it and in the software part when we really compare that we're going to talk a little bit more about that in it the other thing to talk about is the actual battery size on this iphone 6s the battery size on the iphone 6s 
surprisingly is not that big. It's around 17, 15 mAh compared to the iPhone 6, which has around 1800 or so. So the battery life is one of the probably bigger complaints of the iPhone 6s. It gives you about 11 hours of video playback if you're looking at that, which is a good measurement of these phones compared to the 12 lineup which gives you depending on which one you get the regular 12 gets you around 17 hours of video playback where the mini iPhone 12 mini gives you 15 hours so almost four to about six seven hour difference but even then if you're getting a used one or older iPhone 6s the battery doesn't seem like it lasts as much maybe ha maybe if you're a light user it'll last you throughout the day but if you're a person who's using it mid medium to even a heavy user you know, notice that battery just draining out really fast and quick and it's going to be one thing you'll notice right off the bat and without talking a little more into the hardware about it let's talk about the software itself so iphone 6s luckily was able to update to ios 14 as you can see we updated this iphone 6s to ios 14 which is the latest ios that was released for the iphone 12 pro lineup so it is able to get that update all the features that you get out of iphone iPhone on for iOS 14 are available. You have that picture in picture, all these um, enhancements that were made with iOS 14. You have this translate app, much more around it. These bigger app widgets, as you saw here, we have app widgets around here, and then of course, app library as well. So, some of the noticeable things we explain all of the iOS 14 feature. If you guys haven't updated, make sure you guys check out our video on the update itself. And the thing about iPhone 6s, unfortunately, this might be the last major release for the iPhone 6s because it's over the five year mark. That's when Apple starts to really move away and ends the support for the major update. So if you're able to get the iPhone 6s in 2021, you might not get the iOS 15 update that is slated to come out in the in the annual apple release cycle around that september october time frame where a new phone comes out from their flagship and a new ios but the good thing about ios 14 is that even after apple stops the major release you're going to get about give or take two to three more years of actual apps being supported so what happens is when apps are in not able to run on the older iOS. It's about two years of life after the end of major release that apps are supported. So you don't have to worry about that. And the good thing about this phone is now you can get it probably under 100 bucks or so. And that might be a selling point for this phone because you still get that whole iOS 14 experience like you would with any of the newer phones. So you don't have that in any shape or form so you have that going for yourself and the other thing we want to talk about is software as you can see we have all of the major apps downloaded here we have these gaming apps and you see all of these apps are able to be downloaded when we open it up it takes a second or two sometimes longer depending on the type of app you're opening but once you have the app opening on a scalar basis if you're playing light version games that aren't really heavy on graphic they work phenomenal you know you don't have any issues at all with that so you're going to have that sort of experience with it no issues with it all of your social media apps as you can see we have facebook here running all of your tiktok uh, any kind of social media app that you use out there are going to be running still because it's ios 14 that's where the software comes in play it does take a little bit once you open things up to start loading it but once you get going you know things are on the fly and you're able to go ahead and go from there and as you see here we're able to open all of these apps where we're trying to demonstrate you there's no bug that's the thing about apple software is the at its stability and its software and what makes people really want to buy it even if you're using this phone to watch netflix maybe on the on the wi-fi or even your cellular data it does a phenomenal job of course the screen size is small if you're comparing to the newer phone and it just has that retina versus the newer display 
display which have sort of this OLED more brightness to it. The, if you compare the side by side, you'll notice the iPhone 12 Pro here we have, you know, it's much brighter in terms of the screen resolution. You get that crystal clear picture versus that old LCD retina display type of setting. So that's one other thing to mention about this phone. The other thing about this phone is probably if you're a photographer or looking into going to review phone for its camera. So good thing about the iPhone 6s is that it's able to take really good pictures. Of course, there's no portrait mode, which is probably a big, big difference when you know when you upgrade to iPhone 7 Plus or 8 Plus lineup where the portrait mode was introduced. It's just able to take regular HDR photos. But the good thing about the video is actually you're able to record in 4K, which wasn't possible on the iPhone 6s. You're able to record at 4K, but only at 30 frames per second. So here, if you go and look at the camera setting, you'll notice that you have a bunch of options. 4K at 30 frames per second is the highest, and the lowest you're getting is around 720 pixel. Of course, if you're recording at 4K, do keep in mind that you're going to be using about 350 megabyte for each minute that you're recording. So there you have it for overall review of the phone here. And we want to kind of conclude with it you know, who might this phone be good for and should you still buy it? A person that's a light user that's looking for basic functionality of an iPhone, you know, that stability of calling, texting, maybe it's someone that's younger that's, you know, it's a first time buyer of iPhone or looking to use iPhone, it might be good for them because a couple of things, you know, the battery life isn't that great and the camera itself, you know, it's a decent camera, but nothing compared to the evolution of camera if you compare it to one of the newer iPhones or any iPhone, any phones out there on the market. But, you know, nonetheless, it still does a phenomenal job, but it might not be good for someone that's really looking to get that enhanced experience with a longer battery, maybe better camera quality, and just having that bigger screen size, you know, someone that's looking for a phone that will last them another four or five years, or at least three to four years, you might not want to get the iPhone 6s because it is at the end of life, we would say, because iOS 14 is the last update for it. So that's our review of the iPhone 6s in 2021. Hopefully this video was helpful. If this video is helpful, please make sure the like button, of course, hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you guys check out the link in the description section where we're including to some of the discounted newer phones if you're looking to upgrade as well. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time.